Here's a question for you. Which country has the world's most tigers? India? Indonesia? Not even close. Try America. Yes, America. Now, these tigers aren't roaming the wilds of the Midwest. They're not even in zoos. No, these are household pets. In all, there are some 7,000 tigers being kept in the backyards and even lounge rooms of everyday Americans. Staggering. And it doesn't stop with tigers. Animal lovers with a taste for the exotic are also sharing their homes with leopards, lions, wolves, even bears. And it's all quite legal. But not surprisingly, things don't always end well for the owners, nor for these magnificent creatures. In snowbound, God-fearing Ohio, it's the last thing you'd expect to find. Not something I see every day, a lion in the snow king of beasts kept as a family pet in a backyard cage. Somebody. But here, as in many states of America, anyone can own a wild animal. Oh, hey, buddy. Animal rescuer Casey Craig sees this all the time. You have the most unusual job in the world. <laughs> yeah. You know, we go to a lot of places and get these animals out of all sorts of different situations. You know, this one's not... I guess the ideal situation, but it's not the worst, obviously, either. Today, Casey and his rescue team, Rebecca and Tawny, must figure out how to calm two-and-a-half-year-old Icon and get him out of his pen and into a long-haul trailer. He's just out around the house, really. That's why, that's why they don't make good pets. They get pretty you meant to be wild. <laughs> Icon was bought as a cub by Sean Mock. He quickly outgrew the living room. Handsome as these creatures are, they don't stay cute and cuddly for long. Good boy. They don't make house pets either, and inevitably they end up in a small cage out the back. Where did you get him? Exotic animal auction, Mount <laughs> Hope. So you can buy them? Yeah, you can How buy just about anything there. How much did he cost? Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Four hundred twenty-five. Four hundred twenty-five. You could pay more than that for a dog. Yeah. What did your dad say when you brought home a lion? Well, he he wasn't real happy. So kids are always bringing home animals. But oh yeah. A lion. A lion. Yeah. That what? was that was a <laughs> big moment when they come bringing that in here. What did you say? Well, they called. They went to a sale and they gave us a call. And my wife came up to me. She said. Uh, Guess what? Kids didn't bring home nothing this time. I said, well, that's good, you know. I sat there and heard a car pull up and I look out the window. I said, oh, my, you know, here it is. I got a lion. Rick, with no disrespect, Americans are crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure are. <laughs> you never know what they're going to bring in. But happily for Icon, there's a way out of here. He is about to embark on a journey to a much better life. <laughs> Casey and his father, Pat Craig, run the biggest private rescue sanctuary in America, rehabilitating large predators from a dysfunctional life with humans back into a more natural world. We call it the captive wildlife crisis in the United States, and what it is is there's 25,000 great cats and bears and other large carnivores that are outside of the zoo system here in the, in the United 25, States. 25,000? Yeah, 25,000. There's 7,000 tigers alone. That's twice as many as there, that, that exist in the wild. <laughs> see, yeah, she'll actually end up around five to 600 pounds when she's full grown. So you can she's see not it. yet fully grown, but Mika the tiger weighs over 380 pounds and is already powerful enough to kill even wild plants. Teaching a tiger to be a tiger Ow. is a dangerous business. And so that's a good example of how she's yeah, she, learning manners. She, you know, she's that's biting, the only, but, but she not didn't hard. take his leg off. No. <laughs> These animals are raised in an environment that's so skewed from what would be natural that when they come here, you know, they have to kind of somehow find who they are again because some of them don't even know they're a lion or a tiger or a bear. They, they think they're either a human or they don't even know what they are because they've never been with other species, similar species. And 
So it's just a matter of putting them in the right situation to, or the right setup so that they can actually let some of those natural behaviors come out. I'm certainly avoiding eye contact, I can tell you. <laughs> the Craigs have developed a real affinity with these thing. animals. Body language is critical. It's your body language, it's your voice. It's Panic it's now and we could be in real strife. Whereas if you do it the right way with your head positions and your body positions and the way you talk to them, they instantly know that you're not a threat to them. Uh, the head position being well, I mean, just in case. Yeah. I should know this stuff before well, it doesn't, I got in here. It doesn't work as well with the tigers as it does with the lions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can we run through your litany of injuries? <laughs> Yeah, um, in 30 years I've been in the hospital probably more times than I can count, and that's not because they wanted to kill you, because obviously I would have died the first attack. It was more that they were either scared or upset or, or just so big that when they're playing around that they break a bone or crush it. So I've had my left arm almost completely torn off where they had to kind of reattach the whole piece and broken bones through it, and um, I've had all my shoulders torn out of the sockets and my knees all taken out of their sockets and had to have all reconstructive surgeries on those and been bit through the chest and collapsed lungs. But Pat is undeterred from his duties as leader of this unusual pack, a true menagerie here in high Colorado in the shadow of the Rocky Mountains. Here is this main compound is where everybody starts right after they've been rescued and then they get to be rehabilitated in this area and then they get to move out to the big habitat. It is a big world. Yeah, uh, this is this the beginning, the incubator basically. Pat's property is much like a rehabilitation center for abused humans. Recovery is step by step and full of surprises. What an amazing creature, what's that? It's a mountain lion. Here's something I bet you didn't know. The cougar or mountain lion mountain is the like largest cat capable of purring. Well, hi, that is fantastic. Thank you. I, I think I've just joined a very small fraternity of men who have heard a mountain lion. That's purr. true. You know, a, the amazing thing is we get people that study these animals in the wild and they come here and they hear things they've never heard before because that's an affectionate sound. For Pat, it all started 30 years ago when he rescued a jaguar called Freckles. And since then, he has saved more than a thousand animals. Today, his 320-acre property is home to lions, bears, wolves, Ooh. leopards, cougars, and 70 tigers. It's okay. It's sounding a bit aggressive. You tell her. <laughs> it's okay. The ultimate goal is to eventually release all these creatures into large prairie paddocks to enjoy a freedom never known before. But some animals have been so badly treated, that's almost impossible. Okay, what's the story with this fella? Well, this is Ricky. He's uh, one of two tigers that we found in a horse trailer. They've been kept in there for five years. In a horse trailer? Yeah, and then what people do is when they get him as a little cub, they have them in the house, but within just a month, they're already too big and they're tearing the house up. So they, they typically are gonna say they're gonna build a cage and they never do. And then their bones have all developed differently because they never got any exercise. So his, when he walks, it looks like he's got flippers on because he never got his muscles and tendons to develop right. Would it be right to say that the people who do this are generally on the whole really stupid? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, 99.99% .99 of the population in the world knows you wouldn't want to have a tiger as a pet, and you couldn't have one as a pet, but that <laughs> one-tenth of one percent when you look at the world population is a lot of people. Yeah. And Casey and his crew meet quite a few of them. Another day, another rescue. This time, the depressing case of Yogi the black bear. With nowhere to hibernate, he's anxiously pacing a small corn crib provided by his owner, Roy Tenner. Why'd you call him Yogi? That's what we called him when we got him. That's just the name I thought up, and I said, well, he'd be Yogi the Bear. You thought up that name? Yep. From the cartoon, Yogi the Bear, so the kid said, name him Yogi. Is he smarter than the average bear? I don't know very smarter. I mean, he, he listens pretty good. Yogi is the third bear Roy has kept like this, 
and not surprisingly, the other two have perished. I bought one the same time I bought him, and then she, she didn't make it. Then the next year I went down there again and bought another one, and then she lived about a year, and then she passed away too. I couldn't figure it out. Could, couldn't raise a female, but Yogi did good. He seemed to love his bear, yeah. and he'd had two before that, which he thought had unaccountably just, they died. Just died, yeah. Well, people don't see that the death was a failure. I mean, they, they let these animals, they get them, they have them, they die because they didn't take care of them properly, and they're like, oh, let's just get another one. That's right. He thought the death was something the animal had done. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't his fault, you know. The damn bear that just up and died on me, so I had to go get another one, you know. And, and that's probably why people like that get those animals to begin with, is their whole point of view is skewed. But it only takes a matter of days at Craig Sanctuary, and Yogi is looking like, dare we say it, a brand new bear. I wonder if he knows you guys rescued him. Yeah, bears are extremely intelligent, so they know that we're the same people that came and took him from there. You know, he didn't, feels good that, you know, we're letting him out here into the habitat, and so he knows that. You know, we're trying to ultimately Good. help him. And, I'd like and him to know that. that scary. He's a bit big. I'd like him to know that. So he's saying, there's those nice guys from 60 Minutes Australia who came and filmed <laughs> me being rescued. Yeah. They're all right. Yeah. Yeah. They're OK. Yeah. Are the changes always this dramatic? This is only a couple of weeks, isn't it? Usually. Sometimes, I mean, unfortunately, some of our animals do come from very harsh situations. and. It can take months, sometimes even years. So this is a great improvement already if, with just a week have gone by. Monday, are you hungry? Breakfast time! But all this humane aid and comfort does not come cheap. Hi, guys. Are you hungry? Hi, babies. It costs $2 million a year to run America's largest non-profit sanctuary. Yeah. All of it okay. donated. Pat Craig, it's definitely a full-time labour of love. Hi, Carla. Hi, sweetie. In 30 years, he's never had a day off. Yeah, no jumping anybody else. No jumping anybody else. A lot of sacrifice, you know. I don't have any kind of retirement. I don't have any money in the bank. I don't have any... Don't well, get you can't vacations. retire because the animals, yeah. some of them are going to see you out. You're going to have to be here forever. Exactly. And so that's the key, is, is you have to basically give up your life to save their lives. But luckily, sacrifice does have its own reward. When you look at Icon, the young lion rescued from Ohio, now in an open paddock, learning to be an animal and not a pet. Yeah, it's definitely gratifying to see the difference just between the other day when we pulled him out of a cage that was, you know, knee deep in deer carcasses to now he's, he has definitely a lot more room and it's definitely a lot more cleaner than it was and he's not covered in deer grease all the time. That must be the great reward of, I think, what is probably one of the strangest jobs in the world. Yeah, it's definitely a good reward. Oh, no, why? He was 100 pounds underweight and is now gaining rapidly. In a few weeks' time, the Craigs will introduce him to his own pride of lions. It's not the Serengeti Plain of Africa, but in America, Colorado's wild animal sanctuary is the next best thing. Well, this is what balances the scales. If you go on rescues all the time and all you see is that really terrible yeah. abuse, you would go nuts. And so the only way that you can survive is seeing the good side, where they actually get to go back to the right kind of life that they should have. Happy ending, that's yeah, what we want. Yeah, that's what we need. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.